I'm Deadline Crafts Editor Ryan Fleming, here with Musica and the co-writer, director, and star, Rudy Mancuso. What's up? <laughs> uh, to start off, can you give a brief description of the film? Yeah, um, so this is a semi-autobiographical tale about a guy who's trying to come to terms with his culture, family, and relationships all through a synesthetic perspective. He has synesthesia, which I have. Yeah, I know the film starts off with, this is based on true story, mm -hmm. unfortunately. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, I felt that that disclaimer was necessary because it's very, very true. Um, and the unfortunately, just because this, this character, me, is a victim of their own self-perpetuated um, chaos. Um, and what made you want to bring this personal story to the film? Well, I, uh, I've never really seen this perspective, the synesthetic perspective, explored in, in, um, in great detail. And I really wanted to paint a musical picture that wasn't necessarily a conventional musical, but uses music as a device and a character in a really immersive way. Um, and B, I wanted to explore a unique cultural perspective. Uh, I'm a Brazilian American, and yeah, I think that, that Brazil and the Portuguese language needs more representation in film, and um, we explore that heavily in the film. And uh, when we start the film, you're already performing with Diego, your puppet. Mm -hmm. um, how did you get started with that? I, I just, I got started just by starting. I, I was obsessed and inspired by Avenue Q and Team America and all these humanized puppet shows with adult humor. It, it, it inspired me and made me laugh. And there wasn't enough of that happening in the online space when I got started with creating. Um, and yeah, it, next thing I knew, I, I ordered these puppet bases online. and. Um, uh, and I started customizing them, and Diego was was born, and he almost accidentally became this this almost alter ego of myself, this unfiltered, almost Larry David of puppets. Um, so for the film, you served as not just the co-writer, director, and star, but also the composer, choreographer. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me about the, that experience as a first-time filmmaker? Yeah, I mean, um, although it's various different departments and hats to wear, they're really heavily interwoven, especially in this film. It also happens to be about my life and my story, so no one really knows the material better than I do. I'm literally playing myself. My mother's playing my mother. Um, so that experience made it, I'd say, easier for me because only I know it, and no one knows it better than I do. I'm not adapting anything. I'm not coming in for hire, it's my story. Um, so although it was demanding and it came with a share of obstacles, for me there was no other way because the music was so woven into the script and the performance was so woven into the direction. Um, it was a lot, but it was to me the, on the only approach. So uh, as an artist with synesthesia, mm -hmm. trying to replicate that on film, uh, what was that experience of trying to visualize this to have other people understand how you see it? Yeah, I mean, I think the film explores my specific type of synesthesia in a more grandiose, romanticized way. But what I really wanted to highlight was that it's not always fun and cool and beautiful and a creative asset. It's actually quite hindering sometimes and intrusive and unnerving. Um, and even the opening scene of the film explores exactly that. That scene whereby Rudy is sitting with his current girlfriend and um, by the end of the conversation, he missed all of it, and his attention is all on the kitchen noises and the restaurant noises. Verbatim um, is, is verbatim a conversation I, I've had and an experience that I've had. So, you know, it, it, long answer to your very simple question. Um, but I sat with a great crew, an amazing DP and production designer um, and, and uh, sound designer, and it was a lot of sonic illusions. It was trick photography. Anything and everything that I could do to suspend this, this synesthetic belief um, was, was imperative. Um, I mean, I don't think it's too long of an answer. I, it's interesting, too, because I feel like 
in certain respects, synesthesia is romanticized in a way. Where it's, so it's interesting to see uh, how it's not really. Yeah, no, music can be the villain sometimes. Um, and it could also be the hero. I'm lucky. I'm a musical person and I, I like creating. So I use my synesthetic qualities as an asset. But um, there are others who aren't so lucky. And it is a, a, a massive inconvenience and hindrance on on their, their lives and experiences. But... Um, but yeah, I think it, it needs more, more light needs to be shined on, on synesthesia because we barely scratch the surface of all the different types. Uh, it's hard to diagnose. Most people who have it don't know they have it, including me for a long time. I just thought it was weird. I am. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that your real mom played your mom in the film. Sure did. Can you talk about that? Because you really tell the, just the familial connection between Pain you in my ass. I love her, though. Um, it was, uh, yeah, I'm so close to my mom. She's one of my best friends in the world. She inspired me to do everything I do and supported me to, to become the person that I am, obviously. Uh, she's unapologetically herself, whether there's a camera crew or not. And um, that translated really well to screen. There was a different approach directing her. I realized that I had to stop being the director around her and just be her son. So, uh, you know, the, the, the strategy was let's, cross shoot at a minimum two cameras uh, a lot of times three you know uh, one over each of us and one two shot rolling at all times because every take was so unpredictable and I told her forget the pages forget the movie forget the lights let's just have a conversation and in a curb your enthusiasm fashion I would steer the conversation to the beats we needed to hit so it was fun it was hard um, but uh, ultimately very very rewarding and I uh you know, bringing this personal story to the screen, your experiences, uh, what do you want audience to kind of get out of it? Well, I think mainly to embrace um, obstacles, to embrace being different, to embrace unique cultural perspectives. Um, I think we're all trying to figure it out. Um, we're all growing. Coming of age is not exclusive to young people. I, I'm still coming of age, um, and the most interesting people in my life uh, haven't figured their direction and paths out. So I think really embracing your differences uh, in the same way Isabella tells Rudy in the, in the film, you know, this is who you are, embrace it, double down, don't hide it, and don't be afraid of it. I, I, I think that's, that, that I, I hope that resonates with a lot of people. Well, that's it for the questions. Thank you so much for joining us at Deadline Studio. Thank you. This is a pleasure.